Okay, let's talk about steps to repair your credit. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm calling these a money Monday because I'm going to start bringing you some different content around other questions I've been getting, as I've been mentioning, not always about startups and entrepreneurship, although there'll be plenty of videos on that. So for today's money Monday, I'm actually going to answer some questions I got about credit repair. Now, just so you know, my background with credit repair and credit in general, obviously my C-level bank experience involved a lot of looking at credit reports, analyzing credit reports as a lender all those different things. But I was also on one of the big three credit bureaus, TransUnion's Board of Advisors. So I know quite a bit about credit, even going so far as not knowing the exact details of different algorithms that are used to identify your credit, but understanding the components that go into that. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit briefly. But today we're going to talk about this, a few steps I recommend for repairing your credit. Now, the very first step in repairing your credit is obviously having an idea of what is on your credit in the first place. You have to know what's on there before you can repair it and fix it. And a lot of people just have never looked at their own credit report. Maybe they go get a loan, the lender tells them what their score is, but then they don't know anything else about it. They don't know what's impacting it. Late payments, bankruptcies, foreclosures, all these different things that can be on there. So as part of understanding credit, know that the fair uh, the Fair Credit Reporting Act governs a lot of these things. So you're going to want to go take a look at that. And of course, as always, I'll put links to all the stuff that I mentioned in the show notes. So you're going to want to understand that the Fair Credit Report Reporting Act impacts a lot of these things around your credit. And one of the things that it says is that you have the right annually to get a copy of your credit report. So I'm going to put you a link down there to annualcreditreport.com. You can go there <clears throat> once a year and request a copy of your credit. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are three credit bureaus that drive most of the lenders, particularly in the United States. They are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. A lot of the times, depending on the lender, the lender makes up their mind on who they're going to use, sometimes depending on their location. So for some reason, Equifax tends to be big in the South. If I remember correctly, they're out of Atlanta. TransUnion is out of Chicago. And um, uh, of course, they all have offices all over the place, but TransUnions, a lot of their stuff is in Chicago, so they tend to be very strong up north, and then Experian is in other places. So you've got your three big credit, and annualcreditreport.com will get you access so you can see what's on all of those three reports. So the first step, again, to reiterate, is to get a copy of your credit and understand what is on there. What I'm not going to go through is how to read a credit report. There's plenty of resources on the internet in order to do that. It's pretty straightforward. You just need to get on there and look for anything that's incorrect and derogatory. Now, when I say that, one of the things I want you to do is to understand that if you are going to refute something, which is what we're going to talk about doing in step two after you're checking it for errors, um, when you look at that, if you're going to refute something that you think is erroneous on your credit, you need to be able to support that, right? So in step two, we're looking at our credit report and we're looking at what's called the trade lines, right? So if you have a car payment, it'll say Nissan finance, and it'll list how much the original balance was of the loan, <coughs> excuse me, what you owe at this time. And then it also shows the payment and then it shows any late payments and it shows late payments in 30, 60, 90 day buckets typically. So what you're going to do is look at those and see if any of that is incorrect. So let's say that you have been marked for a late payment that was 60 days late, but you know for a fact that that late, that payment actually cleared your bank or maybe was a check that you wrote, whoever's still writing checks, right? Was a check that you wrote and you can prove that that check cleared in time to not be late. If that's true, then you are definitely going to want to, refute that that shouldn't be on there. And of course, the, the documentation you would provide to refute that is a bank statement or the cleared check or something like that. So you want to go in step two, go through your report and find anything that's erroneous, even if it's dates, right? So if it's got a date for your foreclosure on a house and it was the wrong year or date, you're going to want to get that corrected because foreclosures fall off after a certain amount of time. And if that date was you know wrong, then it's going to impact when it falls off your credit report. So step one, 
take a look at your credit report. And then step two, start to figure out what on there is erroneous and incorrect. And again, don't refute something you can't prove should be cleared. Then in step three, it's really, and I'm, by the way, I'm putting again links in the notes to um, the all three credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. I'm going to put a link in, in the show notes to how you can go and dispute what is on your credit report with them. So you just click that link and it'll take you through the process of how to refute it. Step three is, is, is focusing on repairing your credit by managing your credit score in the first place. So once you've looked at your credit and you've got things disputed that you need to get corrected, then it's all about maintaining and managing your credit score over the long run, being proactive about that, right? So credit score, to be able to do that, you got to know what drives credit scores. I'm going to give you four different things that drive these credit scores, and then you need to manage to those things. So the most important important thing in most credit algorithms is your payment history. Just what we talked about. Are you paying on time? Are you making your payments on time? If you have too many late payments, it's going to start to push your credit down, down, down. Okay. So that's the first thing you want to think about. The second one is called utilization. I'm going to give you an example of what this is. Basically, it's a fancy word for how much of your available credit are you using. So here's the example. Let's say you have a credit card that you can charge up to $10,000 on. Please don't if you do, or if you do, let's start paying it down, right? Another, another video for another day. But if you have a $10,000 available balance and you own $9,000 on that, that is a 90% utilization. In most instances, you want to keep a round, a 70% utilization. Now notice I didn't say a 0% utilization. Most of the credit bureaus actually ding you for not using credit. Why is that? Because then they can't use that to historically predict how you're going to make payments. So they actually encourage you to have outstanding balance on your balances. Believe it or not, that's why folks like Dave Ramsey, when he talks about credit, he says he has a zero credit score because he doesn't owe anybody anything, right? And doesn't even keep trade lines or credit cards open, even if he has a zero balance. So you actually will get dinged for a too low of a utilization. If you're trying to push your credit score up, it's not a bad idea to have some sort of a balance on your, util your utilization balance for a particular trade line. Just make sure that you're paying it off <laughs> as much as you can or as fast as you can. Okay. So that's the third piece of managing a credit score. Then the age of your trade line, right? So if you've had a car payment for five years, that's better than if you've had it for one year, right? Why? Because when they're predicting your credit scores, these companies also predict how it's going to move. And by having a longer credit history, both for your overall profile and each trade line, you are showing them that you can perform the way they want you to perform. And then the last thing is credit inquiries. Now, what I will tell you about this is, don't panic if you're going to borrow money and they say they're going to, a lot of people would ask me when I was in banking, they would say, well, gosh, are you going to hit my credit? <clears throat> How's it going to impact my credit? Certainly credit inquiries can change your credit score, but one credit credit, I can't speak today. One credit inquiry at a time is not really going to move your credit that much, right? Um, what is going to move your credit is if you go out and you're talking to someone about buying a car and they hit your credit. And then you're also applying for a new mortgage on a new house and they're pinging your credit. And you're also applying for a credit card and they're pinging your credit. When you're really going to see your credit move from credit inquiries is when you have it across all kinds of different types of loans within the same amount of time, right? So if you go and you're looking to buy a car and five different lenders ping your credit, it's going to move your credit. Not as much as you think because the credit algorithms know that it's all from the same industry. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about credit inquiries, try not to panic over this type of thing. So just to summarize back to you about credit repair, the first step, you gotta know what's on there, get a copy of your credit report every single year and check it for errors. Second step, get those errors cleaned out by talking to the three different credit agencies, proving that, you, that those are erroneous and getting them removed. And then the third step is to manage your credit ongoing and push it up score by score by understanding what goes into credit, managing and sort of playing the credit game, to be honest with you, uh, to some extent. So until next time, I hope that helps. I hope you find your voice. Have a great day.